Of all the image modes in Photoshop, probably one of the least used these days is bitmap mode. But it's worth a look, as it does present a couple of interesting artistic and practical possibilities. We can open any file in RGB or CMYK mode, like this one, which is in RGB. Glance down and see its size, about 2.6 megabytes. To convert, we first have to go to Image, to Mode, to Grayscale. We have to convert this way first because the program won't allow us to go straight into bitmap. Most people hear the term black and white and see what Photoshop calls grayscale. But the true black and white version of a file is bitmap. We'll be asked if we want to discard color information, and we'll do so. Then we can also see, if we look down to the left, that the file size has dropped significantly. An RGB image has three color channels to carry the red, green, and blue info. A CMYK image has four, one for each of the four ink colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This can be seen in the channel's palette. But since this file has only one channel now, gray, it takes up less space on disk. Channels comprise the color information, which makes up the image, so fewer channels equals less information and a smaller file size. Then comes the interesting part. We can now convert to bitmap mode, going through the same menu we did before, image to mode to bitmap, which is now available. And here we actually have some variety. The first choice on the dropdown, 50% threshold, says that if a pixel's brightness value is 128 or less, the max is 255, the pixel should turn black. Anything higher should be white. If we OK this, the picture gets a very sharp division between areas of light and dark, a type of film called lithographic, or litho used to do this, but we don't get a lot of detail this way. I'll go ahead and undo. Another choice would be pattern dither. Again, image to mode to bitmap. We can click the drop down and select it. A preset pattern here is used to sort of simulate lighter and darker areas in the image, and if the resolution is fairly high, the picture can retain some detail. But higher resolution means more pixels, and this in turn means a larger image. Still, dropping from several megabytes or more to a couple at most is pretty good. And when we OK this, we can see the picture somewhat resembles the original. Again, I'll undo. Diffusion dither, though, is often the best choice when an image needs to look as much like the original as possible. Go to Image to Mode to Bitmap yet again, and select Diffusion Dither. Diffusion Dither in Photoshop terms is scattering pixels in a semi-random fashion to simulate light and dark grays in a way the eye can interpret more understandably. This is often a good middle ground between grayscale and the harshness of 50% threshold. When we OK it, the picture is still pretty recognizable. Even though all the bitmap choices bring the file size way down, only two colors here after all, this almost looks like a true photograph despite it. And again, I'll undo. The last two are rather less used than they used to be. Halftone screen is the first one of these Go to Image to Mode to Bitmap yet again, and select Halftone Screen. A halftone screen allows for high-volume printing on high-speed presses, the way some newspapers are still printed. Halftoning is a method which makes larger or smaller dots or lines to lighten or darken areas in the image. The number per inch remains the same throughout the picture, but their size changes. When we OK this, we get the second dialog asking what frequency we want for the lines, what angle we want them printed at, and what shape if we're talking about dots. When we OK it, the image does indeed remind most people a little bit of a newspaper picture. Custom Pattern, the last choice, uses Photoshop's existing tileable patterns to impose a larger or occasionally smaller pattern dither style on the pixels. Again, image to mode to bitmap. We select custom pattern. 
and we see the drop down here. It can produce some neat artistic effects, but may require some playing around to find when one of the patterns which works well with a given image. We can try any one we want here and OK it. And some of the patterns will produce a more recognizable image, others will not. Color is often lovely, and even grayscale can be striking, but bitmap mode can be an attention getter and has the advantage at least of saving space on disk or for email.